morning, Sunday, 11th of November. Yes. It's our second day here in uh, Phnom Penh, so we do a little bit of sightseeing again. We'll start with the killing fields and then we'll be back in the centre here to see maybe some of the museums. Yes. That's what we're doing today. So Now we're in the... Tuk Tuk. Yeah, now we are in the Tuk Tuk. <laughs> that is why this is the background now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now we're in the Tuk Tuk. So we'll have a little... I think it's about 15 kilometers away, so quite a long Tuk Tuk ride we have. So. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the first thing we are visiting today is the killing fields, which has now been turned into a genocide museum. This is a, so we started yesterday by visiting the S21 prison. That was a school that had been converted into a prison during the Khmer Rouge regime. Um, they were, if anybody committed a crime here in Cambodia, they were sent to the prison there to be interrogated. And once the interrogation was complete, they were driven out here to be executed and. Uh, this is one of many of the uh, killing fields around Cambodia. So we'll go and have a look around here now and see what there is to see here. So uh, Pol Pot's regime, the Khmer Rouge, they introduced a very strict form of communism. So uh, within three days of them taking power here in uh, April 1975, all of the cities were emptied within three days. And uh, families were split and uh, taken to work uh, in the fields. So this, this is where the trucks would stop, the trucks that would deliver the, the victims from the prison. The, the prisoners were actually told that they were being moved to a new house. Um, but they would all be moved in the middle of the night, blindfolded, uh, in trucks. And this is uh, where they would stop here. It takes about 30 minutes from the, the prison where we were yesterday to arrive here. And the trucks would stop here in the night time. So in the first few years, 75, 76, 77, would be a... Uh, Two or three trucks a week would pull up here, 50 or 60 people. But in 1978, trucks would turn up here every day. So these were people that were killed here. There was enemies of the, the state of uh, Pol Pot. But they were mainly uh, educated people. Anybody that was an engineer, a doctor, anybody that spoke a foreign language, wore glasses, had soft skin, these kind of things. They were enemies of the state here. Even though most of them had done uh, nothing at all. There used to be a kind of a holding centre where people would be detained but most of them were actually killed the very same night they arrived but in 1978 there were so many people here that would be held in a cell here overnight okay so the trucks would enter there there used to be some buildings here they're now removed they were removed after the fall of the regime but uh, just beyond the trees here this is the actual killing field so they didn't uh, take long they move them here and they actually would be killed at the side of the the uh, graves here and then just thrown into the graves they didn't even use bullets because those were too expensive it was all very primitive with the iron bars and simple tools just this one here 450 people are in this grave here this is one of 130 of these graves here around this field here 20,000 people are buried here in this field and this is one of many killing fields in Cambodia. Well, it's pretty incredible to think what went on here in Cambodia with Cambodians killing their own people. It's uh, pretty uh, incredible really. Such a pure form of con communism that uh, they tried to introduce here, of course failed there completely. Cambodia was also completely closed to the outside world during the Khmer Rouge's time here. But, uh, nobody had any idea what was going on here. The borders to Thailand and Vietnam were completely closed and completely a landmine. It was impossible to get through. Only a few diplomatic people could get through. Especially 
One uh, man from Sweden came here on a diplomatic mission, but he had no idea what was going on. And he, to find it horror, uh, years later, what actually went on here. So even to this day, if, uh, whenever it uh, rains here, even fragments of clothes, they still come to the surface with the bones as well. This is a grave, of, a mass grave of women and children. Because when they uh, killed uh, one member of the family, they had to also kill the rest of the family. So nobody later on would seek revenge. So they used this tree here um, to position a very loud uh, loudspeaker. That would actually be used to drown out the, the sound of the executions. So they say this is a, a stupa that has been uh, built to actually house the remains of uh, some of the victims here. Actually, uh, quite easy to see evidence on the skulls of the way they've been. Uh, the skulls have been damaged either by a blow to the head with an axe or some other instrument. <laughs> So that was a visit here to the killing fields here uh, near Phnom Penh in Cambodia. Not an easy place to visit, um, but uh, start to understand what actually went on here during the Khmer Rouge's regime time um, when you visit this place. But, uh, this is uh, one of 300 killing fields around Cambodia. Um, some of them now are also marked with a stupa. This is the biggest one in the whole of Cambodia. The others are marked with a smaller stupa and some of them are now just lost in the jungle. Um, maybe never to be found. At uh, Pol Pot, when uh, the Vietnamese invaded in 79, he escaped to the border near Thailand. And actually continued uh, to lead his party for another 20 years. <laughs> 10 years after the Vietnamese invasion, the Khmer Rouge, they were still officially recognized by USA, England, France and China as the official rulers of the country here. Pol Pot, he actually went on to have a good life. Um, and in 1997 he was put under house arrest and then one year later he died in 1998. Uh, maybe believed to have been poisoned by somebody in his own group. So uh, yeah, he actually married uh, twice. Just amazing to think how Cambodians could kill their fellow Cambodians. But uh, even the officers in the regime, they were also scared of their own life. If they didn't commit the executions, they were ordered to, they would also be uh, executed. So now we're back in the centre of Phnom Penh. Well, this is the third day of the Independence Day celebrations, which uh, finishes today in a big finale this evening with fireworks. But now there's a lot of activity here. Now we came back to the town, lots of school children around. Not sure what's going on yet, but uh, we'll go and see if we can have a look. Also, a lot of police around. The coffee shop we wanted to have lunch in was actually closed and surrounded by police. Not sure why either. 
Uh, we'll see if we can find out what's happening. This is the Cambodian flag. The blue symbolizes the royal family. The red is the people. White there, that is actually uh, the temple of Angkor Wat. Very important policemen that seem to have appeared now. Okay, we've just been trying to ask some of the many police around here. None of them speak English, but another guy <laughs> managed to tell us that the king is about to leave the palace and go to the Independence Monument. So maybe we need to go back to the palace now and see if we can see that. We're on the way to the National Museum, but maybe we have to wait until tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> Should we see if we can see the king? Yes. Okay, we'll go back and see if we can see the king. We have never seen the queen in Denmark or the queen in England, but now we're newly seeing the king of Cambodia. Yeah, let's see if that's possible. <laughs> Police are getting in position here in the motorcycle. Oh, Jamie, you just saw the King of Cambodia. Yes, I just see the King of Cambodia. What do you think of that? Good, very good. <laughs> Never seen anything like that before. No. Is that the first king we've seen on this trip? Yes. Is that the first king we've ever seen? Yes. 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 <laughs> very good. I wasn't actually sure which car he was driving in, but I hope I filmed the right one. <laughs> but now he's making his way to uh, Independence Monument, there where we were the first evening. Well, these children, together with us, have been waiting here the past few hours just for what 30 second glimpse of the king there <laughs> all have their pictures here of him <laughs> very proud of their king hello very good <laughs> so Cambodia is now in a new age after one fourth of its population was wiped out they're now 50% uh, of the population is under 15 years of age so they're in uh, rapid growth again. So we're back here near the, the palace, the king's palace. In about an hour from now there should be a, a firework display. So let's hope we get a chance to see that this evening. That was the end of our second day here in Phnom Penh. Yeah, we started this morning seeing the results of uh, communism at its very, very worst. Um, quite shocking to see, really. And, uh, but then we finished the day here, seeing uh, the Cambodian people celebrating the third day of their celebrations here for their independence. So uh, well, that's nice to see, just to, to think that only 20 years ago they got their real peace here in Cambodia and what a development they're going through. 
the capital city here that's uh, going through an amazing fast development so that's good to see but uh, yeah we'll spend uh, one more day here tomorrow we didn't manage to see everything we wanted to see today because uh, we spent all afternoon waiting for the king to appear but uh, so we'll take one more day here and see uh, a museum and uh, a few other attractions and that's uh, yeah and that's everything done here in uh, Phnom Penh so we'll Start. Get on with the cycling towards uh, Angkor Wat. So have a few days cycling and then we'll get to Angkor Wat. But one more day here tomorrow. So I'll see you here again in Phnom Penh. Waiting and waiting, not really much is going on. We don't know what to do, so maybe we'll do some waiting for the king selfies. Can we yes. do that? Yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs>